Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I'll be helping you to fix some of the problems you might experience with playback in Dorico, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. We want you to have the best possible experience as you start to use Dorico, our aim being to get you up and running as quickly as possible without any problems. However, one area that is quite difficult to keep 100% problem free is that of playback. In the world of computer audio, there are so many variables, with computer hardware and varying configurations and plenty of settings to change that benefit different applications in different ways. On occasion, you may hit a problem where my Dorico isn't playing back as you expected, or in some cases, isn't playing back at all. This video aims to work through as many as possible of the more common issues you may encounter. So please keep watching to the end. I'll be covering quite a few scenarios. Firstly, I'll be checking that all components needed to run Dorico and successfully hear the music play back have been installed and are configured correctly. Then I'll move on to device setup and any onboard or external audio interfaces you have and problems such as YouTube not working correctly while Dorico is running. What's more, with the problem fixed, you'll be able to hold your head high and take on the world with renewed energy, safely knowing that you mastered the computer. Ready? Let's make a start. I've started a new project and added a piano, but I'm not hearing anything, either during input or playback. Let's switch to play mode to investigate. In the VST Instruments panel on the right, you should be able to see one entry labelled Halion Sonic SE. Halion Sonic SE is the player that loads and plays back the sound library that is bundled with Dorico. If this is not here, it is quite possible that it hasn't been installed. If you installed Dorico using DVDs, then try the installation again, and this time make sure you are selecting to install Halion Sonic SE and the Halion Symphonic Orchestra sound library. When you download Dorico using the Steinberg Download Assistant, which is freely available on the Steinberg website, then you are presented with four items. As well as downloading and installing either the full application or latest updater, you must download and install these middle two items named Dorico Playback 1 and 2 as these will install the Halion Sonic SE player and the Halion Symphonic Orchestra library that actually contains the sounds. Once installed, then you should find that when you create a project and add an instrument, an instance of Halion Sonic SE will be added to the VST Instruments panel and loaded with the appropriate sounds. OK, the next step is for when you can confirm that Halion Sonic SE is installed and loading, but you still can't hear any sounds. Click on this E button to edit the instrument and the Halion window opens. We can see the 16 available slots down the left here, with just the first in use for our piano that we added. Dorico has helpfully automatically loaded this Yamaha S90ES piano patch. And if you were to add additional instruments, then these other slots would be used to load appropriate sounds. So if you can see the piano loaded, that's a good sign. And when you drag your mouse along the keys, you should be able to hear the notes audition. Not only that, but you should also get some visual feedback from the level meter lighting up as you play the notes. If you can see the lights on the level meter, but cannot hear any sound, then double check that your headphones or speaker cables are properly connected to the correct audio port. Because at the moment, Dorico will only send audio to the first pair of stereo outputs on your device. I should probably also ask you to double check that the volume of your computer or speakers is turned up. If this still does not fix the problem, please keep watching. We'll be getting into some more operating system specific solutions later in the video. Sometimes you may find that when you start to play back your project, the sound you hear resembles this mind-blowing synthesizer effect that really makes you wonder what's about to happen next in your life. Don't fear. 
All that's happened is that Halion has loaded the incorrect sound. And you can fix this simply by opening the play menu and choosing apply default playback template. And this should force all of the correct sounds to be loaded for the instruments you have added to the project. If that doesn't work, then it is possible that you need to reset Halion's database. We do this by deleting a special folder that then gets rebuilt next time you run Dorico. Now this folder is in different places on Windows and Mac. So we'll start by closing Dorico, and then on a Windows machine, open a File Explorer window and navigate to your home directory. We're looking for the App Data folder. So if you don't see it, open the View tab and check this Hidden Items checkbox. Then double click to open App Data, Roaming, Steinberg. We want to delete the VST Audio Engine underscore 64 folder. But beware, if you have previously created a whitelist for your VST2 instruments, this is where that is saved. So you might want to make a copy of that VST2 whitelist text file before you delete this folder. Now, when you restart Dorico, it will spend a bit of time rebuilding the database for your sound files again. But after that, hopefully Dorico and Halion Sonic SE will choose and load the correct sounds. On Mac, you can find the folder by opening a Finder window and choosing Go, Go to Folder, type tilde, which means start at the current user's folder, slash library, slash preferences, and press go. Then find the VST Audio Engine folder and move it to the trash. Restart Dorico, and again, it will take a little longer than usual to start up while it scans the folders and rebuilds the library. Now, if you're finding that the audio is playing back, but perhaps you're experiencing clicks or dropouts, then you might need to tweak the options for Halion Sonic SE. Open the Halion Sonic SE window using the E button and press this Options button. You can try moving the balance slider to the right to increase the amount of RAM used, especially if you have plenty of available memory. You could also try increasing the maximum number of voices, particularly if that number is currently set to something like 128. It's actually surprisingly easy how quickly the number of voices in use will add up especially in orchestral textures, and once you consider that many sound libraries use additional voices for release trails. Try setting it to 256 at first and see if that improves matters. If you have a multi-core processor, you can try switching on this control that will make use of the additional power your computer has. You might not want to set it to use all available cores straight away, Perhaps try setting it to 2 and seeing if that makes a difference. We also strongly recommend using an SSD, which will allow Dorico to access the sound library data far more quickly. Now we'll turn our attention to the more general audio setup of your computer and any devices you may have connected to it. OK, so perhaps you've confirmed that Halion Sonic SE and the Halion Symphonic Library are installed, but when you press play in your project, you don't hear any sound. Check to see if the playhead is moving during playback. And if it's not, open the Edit menu and choose the item at the very bottom, Device Setup. It's the first option we're interested in at the moment, the ASIO driver. Now, ASIO is a technology that was developed by Steinberg to convey digital audio data between professional audio applications and the audio interface. The audio drivers made for the built-in audio hardware that shipped with your computer are great for many tasks, including playing the system sounds and watching your favorite videos online. But software such as Dorico needs a more powerful ASIO-compatible driver. So when you install Dorico on Windows, a special ASIO driver is also installed. It's called the Generic Low Latency ASIO Driver, and while it's not possible to guarantee it will work with 100% of all audio interfaces, it does work with the vast majority, especially with the most common sound chips 
that are built into computer motherboards these days. If you have no special audio interface and just want to listen to Dorico through the headphone jack of your PC, then you're most likely going to want to choose the generic low latency ASIO driver. However, if you do have a specialized sound card or a USB audio interface that handles the audio coming out of your computer, then you should choose that device instead. On Mac, it essentially works the same way, except the default option is called built-in audio. And again, if you have any other devices attached to your Mac, then these will show up here in the list as well. Now it's very important to understand that Dorico can only currently send audio to the first stereo pair of outputs on your device. So if you are plugging your speakers into outputs 3 and 4 or 5 and 6, then you're not going to hear anything coming out of Dorico. Similarly, if you have a computer that has a headphone jack at the front and the back and you're not hearing anything through your headphones, try the other jack and see if that makes a difference. In the future, we plan to give you more control over the outputs that Dorico's audio can be routed to. At the moment, don't worry about the other controls in this dialog. We shall come back to those in a moment. So just press close and now when we play back, hopefully the playhead is moving. But if you still cannot hear any sound, then let's try some other things. We're going to look at a couple of details specific to Windows. So let's open the device setup dialog again, and you'll notice this device control panel button. The device control panel is specific to the ASIO driver you have selected. I have the Steinberg UR22 interface connected, which uses the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver. And when I open the device control panel, you can see that it looks like this. When you're using a dedicated audio interface, such as this one, there should hardly be the need for a Dorico user to make any changes here. However, you might need to if you're using the generic low latency ASIO driver, especially if you're having a problem such as no sound being produced. The control panel for this device looks like this. The first option allows Dorico to take exclusive access of your sound device, which is good if you don't want the risk of any other audio sounding while you're using Dorico, but bad if you need to be able to switch applications and listen to video playback and so on. You may have experienced a problem whereby you cannot watch YouTube videos while Dorico is running. Sometimes the YouTube video will play, but without any audio. In that case, make sure this option is not checked. Probably the most important part of the dialog is this section in the middle, labelled Output Ports. And this lists the available devices that the driver can see and use to play back audio. As the name suggests, this is a generic driver, and so can be used with my connected UR22. And if I so wish, I can select it here but you're probably more likely to leave it with the system sound device enabled. In order to enable a device, you have to click in the box so that it is checked, and only then will its port be selected for audio output. Sometimes, if you are having a problem with no sound coming out of Dorico, you might discover this out port port section is completely empty. If this is the case, then close down Dorico, and down in the taskbar, right-click the loudspeaker icon and choose Playback Devices. In the Playback tab, select the Speakers item and press the Properties button. Ensure Device Usage is set to Use This Device, Enable, and then switch to the Advanced tab. This first control sets the default audio format for the device. But if this doesn't match what our good friend the generic low latency driver is set to, then you're not going to get any audio out of Dorico. So, from the list of supported formats, choose the first entry, 16-bit, 44.1 kHz, and close the dialog. Restart Dorico, and hopefully now you will hear audio. If you're still not, or if you find that everything has been working for a while, but suddenly the playhead has stopped moving during playback, or now it's out of sync with the audio, then open up the device setup dialog again and double check that the sample rate is set to 44.1 kHz. 
even if it is, select it again and wait maybe just a second or two to make sure it has definitely taken the new value. 44.1 kHz is probably the most common sample rate and it provides CD quality audio, so we do recommend it's what you use. The only time you might want to change it is if you have sound libraries that were sampled at a higher sample rate. Otherwise, you're going to notice a higher CPU usage, but no better sound. And of course, if you do need to set a higher sample rate, you will need to change it both here and in the device's properties like we did a moment ago. One final tip back on Mac is that if you find that Dorico always plays back at full volume, then in the device setup dialog, click on device control panel and uncheck the option to set device attenuation to zero decibels. This is a persistent setting, so you won't need to set it every time you run Dorico. I really hope that I've been able to help solve your problem, but if not, please visit the Dorico forum. I'll put the address in the video description. You may find someone has already solved the problem you're experiencing, but if not, start a new topic with as much detail as you can provide, and we'll do our best to get you sorted quickly. If you found this video helpful, it really would mean the world to me if you would click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it. And please subscribe to our Dorico channel right now to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.